Tell me when we're on, Suze. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity, Easter's on its way. Those are all the words I know to that song, so I can't sing anymore. Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity, Easter's on its way. Hey, everybody. You have rolled up on the Totally Tiffany Tuesday Live. Susie has a weird face. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Live, my Tuesday tribe. You're seeing some eyeballs popping on the screen. We will do our little thing. La, 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 la. All right. We got some eyeballs, Suze. Yes. Yeah, everybody, it's almost Easter time. Everybody, make up a Easter rhyme. All right, everybody. It's Easter week. I hope all of you. Hey, everybody. Here I am. Susie's zooming in and she's zooming out. We've got all kinds of things Ooh. going on today. Ooh, it is Woo! So We're in. We're out. All right. Hey, there I am. Let's go. All right, my friends, welcome to Tuesday Live. And uh, I'm just going to start today. I know one of the questions that I get asked some with some regularity is, do I actually craft? And I do. And these are the things. Some of you saw I did a, um, a live from my friend Jen's house. And then we did another class with Jen, our Sassy Crafters class. And we did some other fun things. So I just thought I would start with those today. Um, my little bunny, my little plaid bunny. So these are just so easy to do. You know, if you haven't worked with, this is a paper napkin and it's just decoupaged onto a pre-painted wooden cutout, bunny cutout. So um, it's super fun, super fast, really easy. And of course you can, this one has very few embellishments. This one has a few more, right? Same thing, also a paper napkin um, that's just been decoupaged on a different napkin right and so what jen does if you're doing this if you if you want to do it this one's got a little few more goo guys on it if you are doing this and doing it with a group what she does is that she will she takes the pieces and she paints them with mod podge first and lets it dry and then when we get there um she gives us the napkins now when you're using these kind of napkins you need to separate. There are usually two layers. There's a white layer and then there's the printed layer. So you have to separate those two because if you leave them on, the white layer will stick, but the top layer will, will peel off. So you've got to separate the napkin. That's kind of a pain. But so she's got them already painted with decoupage and dried. And so when we get to class, we just choose what we want to put on and then we iron it on there with a mini iron, a piece of parchment paper, and then you over the top and then you just iron it onto your wooden shape. So if you're teaching a class or you have a group um, and you want to keep it a little neater and a little faster, the ironing option works really well. And we did it with all of these things. And then we just kind of embellished them up from there. So more little Easter goodies. All right. There's my crafty project for the week. So what is going on today, my friends? Do you have questions? How's your craft stash? What are you, oh, do you have big Easter plans? I wish everybody a happy Easter this coming weekend. Um, yeah, so this is your opportunity to ask me questions. I'm trying to think about anything new that we might have in our assortment that might be important to uh, talk to you about. I did get some questions about paper organization the other day or a question. I guess it was a two-part question. What do you do with double-sided paper and um should you store your paper by size so two 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 things are double-sided paper i <coughs> i usually choose the side that i'm if it's an individual sheet right just so, so often paper comes in a collection and you want to keep it in that collection but when you think about the collection of paper it's going to be spring or christmas or birthday or beach or something like that so that collection is going to fit right into your four section system and that's where it should go and you should keep things together that you use together 
But if you have random paper that's maybe floral on one side and striped on the other, and it's the rest of the collection is done, just pick the color that's most dominant in the side you're most likely to use and put it in that section of your four section system. It'll make it really simple to just span through and find it later. And remember, it doesn't, if you misfile a piece of paper, it's in the wrong color, or you put it in, it has orange and pink in it, and you put it in orange. When you flip through there, you can always move it. If you think later, oh, this probably should go in orange, or I'm more likely to use the other side. One thing I think is important to keep in mind is that we all have enough paper that you're going to find a beautiful piece of paper for your project, even if a few pieces of paper are misfiled in the wrong category or color. So try not to worry too much about that itself and just uh, more worry about the accessibility, the visibility, and being able to kind of flip through that. So the second question was, do you keep your paper stored by size? I do not. I keep my six by six, my 12 by 12, my eight and a half by 11 within the four section system and all together. So that if I'm working on a Halloween anything, right? And I think that's also really important. If you're working on anything that's Halloween, whether it's a treat bag, a scrapbook page, a card, a table setting, a uh, wine bottle tag, you want to see all of your Halloween things, right? You don't want to separate them out by, oh, this is for cards. This is for scrapbooking. This is for, you know, uh, home decor. All those things can be used together. So keeping them all together is really important for getting the highest and best use out of your products, right? You don't want to be looking around through different I, uh, types of crafting if you can avoid it, right? Like everything that can go together can go together. So I have six by six Halloween paper and Halloween scraps and 12 by 12 and eight and a half by 11. And it's all together in Halloween, right? So that's the easiest way to see and use everything. So that would be my recommendation. I know other people keep the three sizes or sometimes there's eight by eight separate, but still together. So you may have a six by six paper handler that has six by six holiday papers and then eight and a half by 11 paper handler with holiday papers and then 12 by 12 uh, paper handlers with holidays in them, but they're sort of all together. So at least it's in kind of one area when you're looking for things. Either thing works, efficiency, put them all together. Uh, if you don't like little, you know, mine goes six by six, eight and a half by 11, 12 by 12 in that Halloween section, um, then you can just group them in the different containers, but keep them together so you can pull them all at the same time. All right, Sue. You ready? Yep. Okay, hang on. Let me start from the beginning. What uh, What is the best way to store alt new glitter paper that is three by six? Alt new glitter paper that is three by six. Boy, I think the, probably the best thing to do is to put it in a five by seven or four by six. It's three by six. These pockets are set. Yeah, I would use probably a five by seven um, pocket and and then any of our five by seven storage options. So you literally could put two. Let's see if I have a um, three by six, three by six. Where are you? Ah, come on. I just saw that the other day. Or the four by six pocket is probably better now that I'm saying that. So let me put on my glasses so I can read my labels here on my shelf. Um, if you go, now I just had that four by six, that's folders. I just had a thing with samples in it and where did it go? Four by six pocket samples, here we go. So this is the four by six fab file. And then it works with the four by six pockets. Right, this one has photos in it, but um, so if you're got if you got three by six paper, it would be about this tall to fill this pocket about this tall. So it would keep it protected. And as you started cutting it up, you could keep the scraps together. And I don't know about Alta New as an individual brand, but a lot of times our glitter papers um, shed. So keeping them in the pockets or keeping them in, in the box is going to keep all that shedded glitter together. So I would probably go with the four by six pockets and, um, and the four by six box. Now you could also go with a taller pocket like 
their three by six like the six by six pocket and then put two sheets vertically together in there um because this the they're seven by seven the six by six pockets you could put so either way six by six and if you go with six by six then you can use the paper handler um the phalene buddy bag or the six by six fab file phalene buddy bag six by six fab file so here's what those pockets look like so if you're going, if they're three, the strips are three by six, you would go this way, this way vertically. You can put two colors in each or two sides that way. And then you can use any of our six by six storage for that. But it would keep your glitter paper from shedding, right? If you're, and then again, you could just put it in your, you don't have to put it in the six by six. The pockets are good because glitter paper sheds, I, I think. I haven't used Altenew. I don't know if it sheds or not, but lots of them do. Um, so the pockets are handy. And then you could just put it in your rainbow section as well, right? You, you don't, <laughs> that's a good question. You, you don't want to keep things separate where you have to think about them separately. So if you can take your six by six glitter paper, blue glitter paper, blue and green glitter paper, put it in your blue and green paper section, or red and pink and put it in your red and pink. When you're looking for reds and pinks, you're going to go there. When you need glitter paper, you're going to say, oh, I need red and pink glitter paper. Paper's all together. Glitter paper's there. So it just gives you one place to look and to train your brain to look for as well. So again, think about that, maybe combining those things so that you can use them together that way. All right. What bunny bag would you recommend for the close to my heart stamp storage? If I want to take them out of the original packaging, right now they are sold in six by six envelopes. Um, probably phalene. So if you're looking and the six by six envelopes would probably fit right in there. So the phalene buddy bag is going to hold the most of it. Well, it's a little bit wider even than the six by six fab file. So I, I would, I think this phalene is probably the best option. Uh, phalene closes up on the sides as well. So if you're traveling, you can put the sides down and the front down. That's going to make sure nothing comes out. Even if you tip it upside down, you're not going to lose anything out of the bag. So probably I would say phalene is a great option for six by six. Um, and, and I don't know what the close to my heart pockets look like. They may just slide right in there. Um, you can also add, you know, the, if you're working on a project, six by six, you've got, we've got the new, right, six by six um, strap master that will hold all your project stuff together and that'll fit in there as well. So if you're working on a specific project or you have bits and pieces, they might, might go perfectly in the six by six scrap master, which is available from the Stamps of Life right now. I think she's the only one that has it. It will be coming out generally in the next short amount of time. All right. Uh, hi, Tiffany. Are you ever going to come back with your paper cards? They're the best. Please say yes. <laughs> are we going to come back with paper cards? Probably not. Um, <laughs> they are awesome. I, I mean, I don't mean that like in an ego way. Uh, sorry, that sounded weird. They're, they're just an easy, easy way to sort, store, organize paper and have it portable and be able to move it around. Um, but uh, no, um, at this point, they're not on the drawing board. That, yeah, if we do them again, it'll be for Home Shopping Network. And what happens is when we do something like that, that's a big item, um, like just the the size of the box is big. So generally we're, we work with someone like HSN and they'll bring in thousands of them and then we'll keep like a thousand for our uh, website as well. Um, so I don't know, I agree. I think they're a great product. I think there's some other things we could do on them to make them even better. I don't know, I'll run it by the powers that be, but right now there's nothing, sorry. Um, question, I have a problem trying to figure out how to store my spider binders. I use them for the extra scrap rack pages and want to use them for taking things from scrap rack. I where and how do I store them? Um, so the spinder binders fit on the, fit on the <laughs> paper cart. Um, <laughs> I think the problem, the challenge with spinder binders is that they're not really stiff, right? They're made of flexible plastic 
and that makes them a little bit wonky to try and store because they don't really stand on their own. So I use, let me see if I can find one really quickly over here. Ah, I don't see one. Um, la, 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 la. So Susie, my tall friend, yes. can you reach? Let's see if I have one right here. Maybe I don't. Can you pull that thing right off the end? And be careful because those boxes might come down. That'll be really easy like this. Yeah, little, not that, just the white metal uh, thing. The very, yeah, that. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, it's very, it's hard to get off of that. Uh, oh, I think it's like stuck. There we this go. One. Perfect. This, one this one will work. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. So I use these. <laughs> to hold them up, right? So this just slides onto a shelf like this. I don't know if it's uh, tall enough. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Good idea. So, that way you need to do so this slides onto the shelf like this and creates this divider. And then you can stand up your spinder binder. And so you could put, depending on what's in them, one, two, two, sometimes maybe up to three. Um, and they just give you that stability on the shelf for that, right? So um, this is just an Amazon item. I think if you look in, um, I think it's called a closet shelf organizer divider or something like that. Uh, so this is what I use and it keeps them standing up on the shelf. They are tall, which is another benefit. Like one of the things that I love about these kinds of shelves as opposed to like the Ikea cube which I also love and I have. Um, but one of the benefits to these kind of shelves is that you can't adjust that height. So your big things like spinder binders and 12 by 12 paper or anything that's tall uh, above that 13 by 13, 13 and a quarter, which is the Ikea cube, you can put it in there. <coughs> so I would go with a shelf. Susie pulled this. I, I have these up on a top shelf. That's where she pulled it off. They keep all kinds of things neat and tidy and organized. So if you have a sweater shelf in your closet or you have purses or you are separating linens in your linen cabinet, they work for all of those kind of things as well. Um, and again, this is it's just an Amazon. I bought it, buy them on Amazon or bought them on Amazon. I haven't bought them for a while. These, I, I think I bought these for the Tacoma warehouse actually. And that's, we've been here for f almost five years. Woo, so, you know, they last, they last a long time. But that's an easy way to get them vertically and be able to take them off and on the shelf vertically. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. All right, Suze. All right. Uh, how do you organize your paper? Where do you store it? My paper is organized in the four-section system. Um, there is no so four-section system. For those of you who are new, alphabets and numbers, themes and sentiments, and let's go A to Z the calendar year, January through December, or winter, spring, summer, fall. And then the rainbow is that last section in the four section system. So everything in my craft room space is organized that way and as much of it together as possible. So that is <coughs> sorry, the beauty of the scrap rack because buttons, brad, beads, bows, stickers, die cuts, pre-cut shapes, uh, embellishments of all kinds can all go into the scrap rack. And then all you have to deal with is things like paper and paint and that kind of thing. And even within those categories, paper and paint, I'm using the four section system. So with paper, that's what I've got. I've got paper storage boxes on a craft cart. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I got a little thing in my throat. Not paper storage boxes. I have paper handlers, the 12 by 12 paper handlers. And they're just organized rainbow, uh, themes and sentiments, A to Z. So that would be things like camping, birthday, travel. And then um, the rainbow section, rainbow uh, themes and sentiments, calendar year, sorry. So all your holiday papers together. And that theme, that's, that method of organizing is what I use for everything, right? My scrap racks are organized that way. My washi tape collection is organized that way. So every time I'm thinking about something, I know if I need birthday, it's going to be under the birthday set, the themes and sentiments be for birthday 
it's all going to be there. Sports is going to be under sports. And then behind the sports tab, I'm going to find football, basketball, baseball, soccer, whatever it is that, that you're interested in or that your family is interested in. But it's consistent everywhere throughout my room. Now, uh, dies and stamps are a little bit, they're organized in a catalog that way, but I use a numbering system with dies and stamps. That's so a little bit different, but it still goes back to that same catalog organized within those same four sections. So if you sort, sort, organize your paper into the four section system, and um, I'm going to give, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, that's weird that I paper org. Um, but I just had that question emailed to me and then it's coming up again. I'm going to have Katie put up some posts uh, over the week talking about where to find. So there's videos and there's hand printable handouts and there's all kinds of things that are available on the TT YouTube station or YouTube channel um, and, and various other places around the internet that will take you step by step through how to sort, store, organize paper. If Barb um, Carlson, if you're on today, she also has all of the, um, organization challenge, get organized challenge, uh, resources. And she, um, will, if you could Barb, put some of those up or put some links up so people can find that from the get organized with totally Tiffany, um, Facebook group. All right. What else have you got? Okay. Let's see. The next one is when I go to a crop and do not know what color of paper I use, I grab a whole bunch of different colors. Question, do I put them back with my stash when I come home or keep them separate for the next crop? Um, it depends, I think. <laughs> if you don't finish that project, right? I mean, I would think that when you come back from a crop, the best thing to do is put everything away because you working in your craft room, except, okay, backtrack. If you haven't finished that project, then I would keep those things together, get home, work through the project. When you're done with the projects that you were doing at the crop, put them all away. Um, if you're ask, asking, should you keep a complete collection of rainbow paper or whatever separate from your regular stash because you can take that to crops. It just depends how often you go. If you go once a year, no. Put everything away when you get back. But if you're someone who goes once a week to a paper crafting event or, tw or twice a month to a paper crafting event, then having a basic one like paper handler that's got a rainbow of paper in it is probably a good idea for you, right? So one of the things that I've constantly sort of harping on is Keep things together you use together. And normally for most of us, that means just your paper in the paper storage system in your craft room. But how you particularly use things um, means that those adjustments need to be made for how you use those things, right? So if you are take, always doing that, then you probably want to have a rainbow box of paper that you refill that rainbow box and put it right back in your crop toad. And one of the things we talked about when we talk about getting ready for a crop or going to a crop is having a crop tote that is always loaded with your basic things. So if you have your scissors and cutters and all that stuff, if you're going regularly, you want a separate set of things. So you're not constantly taking things apart and putting them back together. PD's here in the studio this morning, but he has to stay with us because Park is leaving. He doesn't act kind of like that. So <clears throat> over there. <laughs> so anyway, think about how you use things and when you use them and why you use them. And that's probably the best way to make that decision. But uh, paper, solid colored cardstock paper is a basic thing like a pair of scissors or a trimmer. So if you have that box of things that you're going to put them that you're always taking to crops, definitely do that. All right. Sorry for the distraction. There you go. All right. What else have you got, Zeus? Okay. <laughs> I know it is Petey. He's the wonder dog. Um, Rhonda from Crowley's Creations wants to know, when will the shorter stash and store be available? When will we have the 10-inch slide stash and store? Um, I don't know. I don't know that we're ever going to get it, to be honest with you. 
I know that some of the new slide stash and store is available or is in the UK warehouse, the, um, the quilting uh, squares and the tray, the ribbon tray, but they're not up on the website yet. And I can't even get a confirmed date of when they will be up on the website for Crafters Companion UK. So sadly, I do not have a good answer for that, but I will. I mean, when they tell me, when they do it, I will let you know. Okay. Have you ever thought of having a zipper go all the way around the Cindy tote bag? Have you ever thought about having a zipper go all the way around the Cindy tote bag? I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, so maybe because the sides of the Cindy don't zip, maybe the, all the way around the top of the Cindy tote bag. Um, I think that our challenge with, with that is what, what you do with that top, if you're not using it and, um, you, and being able to tuck it into the bag, uh, currently it only goes, it just zips across one side. I don't know. That's an interesting idea. Uh, we might be, we might have to give a, a new name. But no, I'll, I'll put it on my list of things to consider as we design new stuff. Okay, let's see. Uh, can you tell me when the Chastity Buddy Bag will be back in stock again? When will Chastity be back? No idea. <laughs> Sorry. I wish I had answers for you guys on um, inventory, but there's a lot of changes going on right now at the warehouse in California. And, and they may have it on the UK uh, crafters companion site. It might be available there. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff happening at the U S warehouse. So that kind of puts everything in a weird holding pattern for incoming product. It, but I would say go to scrapbook.com and put your name on the email list or to the stamps of life. They probably have also have a link that you can email me when this comes back in stock and then they will, they'll let you know. I, I, I wish, yeah, they're just not good about getting that information to me. So I don't know. Okay. Um, I love my cloth binder that holds two spinders. Is there any plan to bring those back? No, uh, right now there is no plan to bring those back. I love those too. The travel, uh, we used to call it the travel pack. And it was the 12 by 12 craft binder that had pockets and everything on the inside. But right now there is nothing on the drum. There's nothing that, that uh, there is no plan to bring them back. However, they may still have them at scrapbook.com. I, I would, I would look at scrapbook.com. If anybody has them in the U S it's going to be scrapbook.com. So I would check, I would check there first. All right, Suze. Okay. What kind of storage would you use to store an eight by eight scrapbook? It measures in length of nine inches. Eight by eight scrapbook. It measures nine inches in length. Let me see here. I think. I think. Um, shoot, where is that? I have an eight by. I would use the eight by eight um, fab file. It's a great storage for that. I, but I just want to. Let's just measure this one. I have this, my little, where is my little eight by eight album box here? So this is nine and a half by eight and three quarters. I think it, what, did you say how long? So it was nine by what? Um, I've already done so I, I think it'll fit in she here. She said the one is eight, but she said it's an eight by eight album and, and it's nine inches. Yeah. I, okay. So I think it'll fit easily. I used to have one here that was just kind of your classic uh, post bound eight by eight album and it fit in the eight by eight fab file. So it's a, fab files are great for storing albums because everything's protected. You've got the little handle on the side. You can label it. If there's other things that are either going into the album or maybe you have some mementos or whatever that you want to store with the album, they're all going to fit in that eight by eight fab file. So, and it's wider, right? So it's got a little more space. They'll also fit in the eight by eight 
<coughs> mm. And also fit in here. I don't know where that went. Darn it. Oh, it's right here. Uh, I'm going to measure this one. So this is the 8x8 paper handler. And this album is... This album is like nine, probably close to nine, a little more than nine and a half, a little more than eight and three, eight and a half. And this is the eight by eight fab file. So I used to keep all my eight by eight things together for an album. So that's going to fit in your eight by eight fab file. And again, you can store all the, like these are the extra pages, papers, that kind of thing easily in the eight by eight fab file. So, and it also makes a nice way to give one if you're giving it as a gift to give the storage box with it. So eight by eight for the eight by eight. This is the eight by eight paper handler right here, actually. I have that in at the moment. All right. Here's a question, Paula. If I use the baleen for the close to my heart stamp set, is there a great special storage envelope to put them in? I want to take them out of the envelope there so they're in now. Yes, you can just use the six by six pockets. No, they fit in the baleen perfectly. So that's what it was designed to hold. So you can pull them out of that and put them into the six by six pockets. And then again, the six by six scrap master works in there as well. If you need to keep some like project pieces together, but they'll absolutely the fit in the six by six pockets, which are actually seven by seven, I think. Before we ask the next question, remind everybody. To oh, remember that if you want to win the prize this week, you have Susie's going to draw the prize because Katie's not with us today. You have to comment in order to get your name in the hat for the prize. So make sure that you, um, are commenting, ask a question, tell us how long you've been around, what your favorite TT product is, any of those kind of things. Just get your name in the feed so that Susie can pull a name from the feed at the end of the show today. Okay. Uh, I need a scrap rack extension. Do you know where I can get one? <laughs> scrap. There's a bunch of them in the warehouse in the U.S., but I think scrapbook.com um, is the only place that has them. And if they don't... Um, I'll check. Uh, if they don't have them, we'll we'll get them there. So, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Are you ready for another one? Yep. All right. Question: Did you retire the Ditto bag? Absolutely love mine, and I have two of them. Uh, did we retire the Ditto bag? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. The weird, so since we don't have a Totally Tiffany website anymore, um, yeah, if you just look at scrapbook.com, I don't think Stephanie, I don't think the Stamps of Life carries those, but they might. Um, or just do an internet search. I know we have a couple of retailers on Amazon, and then we do sell everything through Notion. So that means you're small. Local stores could could order that product for you. It, I don't think it comes in as many colors anymore. Um, but yeah, we definitely didn't. It's not been discontinued. It's been one of our best sellers for years. I'm just not sure where to send you to find it. Sorry. All right. Do you have any ideas of how to set up a cutting machine at your table for a crop to utilize the six foot table best, maybe a shelf to put the machine on or a shelf over it and put a laptop to use with it. Um, you know, here's what I would recommend. If you, I would recommend, so I have this little cart that looks like, uh, um, it looks like all the little carts, right? Like the Rascog cart or the, you know, the ones they sell at Michael's or Joann's or whatever. I got mine on Amazon and it looks like that except it folds flat, right? So um, instead of being permanently that shape, it, it folds flat and it has this back handle on it. And I have my Cricut machine on that and I have a hook that's hanging my Cricut mats off of it. And if you were using it at an event, you could easily park it at the end of your table um, especially if you were able to get a table that was, you know, the end of a table that was at 
the wall was over here and you had this little space at the end, you could park it right there. And it works really, really great for that. Um, I think, I'm not sure that there is a good enough shelf to, and, and then you can have all your cords and all your tools and all your things all on that little cart as well as some other, other stuff. Um, I will try to find, if yeah, if you search three-tiered cart folding, um, you could probably, it'll probably just pop up. It looks like all the other carts. Wait, someone just posted, check on Amazon for a laptop shelf. Saw a Cricut on one at a crop and they worked great. Yeah, so yeah, like a, la a laptop shelf would be, especially, you know, the problem with a Cricut is the length of it right? Like it's however, you know, it's big. So a computer monitor shelf or a laptop shelf, and it has to be pretty sturdy because the machine moves quite a bit would work. And then you have that space underneath it. So it's off your workspace. The problem with crop space is you have, you're so limited with it, right? So the other thing that would probably work would be the um, totes that uh, we used to sell the wraps for that they sell at Home Depot. Um, that so it's one of those plastic crates that has wheels that you you know pull up the handle, but it has a lid. So you want to look for the one the one at Home De or not Home Depot, Office Depot had a lid on it. So you could set that Cricut machine on the lid of the tote, and then it could even roll under the table in your workspace. If you're somewhere where they're not uh, where you couldn't put a thing at the end, it could sit next to you and then actually roll under the table as well. So either of those options for cart, um, but a laptop, uh, yeah, a laptop thing is you just have to, the size of it depends. And it depends what size cricket you have. I guess the maker is bigger than uh, some of the other ones. So depending on what you've uh, got that way, it might be, um, might be a good option. Sorry, my uh yeah a laptop shelf also just you just want to make sure it's sturdy enough because the way the machines move right but but that would give you space under your desk as well so that's a great suggestion laptop shelf all right sis what do you got all right um which bag works best for glimmer foil machine and foil glimmer foil machine and foil <laughs> um Oh, so if the glimmer machine is the same size as this, I don't know. I don't have one. I thought I did have a glimmer machine. That's odd. I have so many machines around. So this, if it's this size, right, I'm going to guess that it's going to fit in. Let's check it out. No, maybe not. It might be too long. Oh. oh, it is too long. Darn it. I don't know that we have a bag that will fit it, right? So this is the Crafter's Companion version. Um, and this is the probably a number four slide stash and store. So I'm not sure we've got a bag that's going to fit it. It would, it would fit in the, oh, it would fit in the 12 by 12 um, storage and supply case. You could easily put it in the 12 by 12 storage and supply case. And then you would have, let's pull one out here. I always make such a mess. Okay, 12 by 12. Where are you? I probably have them all filled up at the moment. The, the challenge of that. All right, well, let's see here. Let's take something out of one. See what we've got. So here's a 12 by 12. Pull out the trays here. Oh, yeah, that would work. So you could go the 12 by 12, and then you have the space here to put the rest of your things, your plates, 
your tools and your foil. Um, I would probably go more plates and tools in there and then put your foil in something like the, um, help me remember her name. She's right here with foil. There she is. Her name is Katja. So there are the bigger rolls of foil in the Katja buddy bag. So you could do foil here in the Katja buddy bag. Um, you could also do, if you, depending on how much foil you have, and if you're trying to keep the um, plates with it, the design plates with it, you could also go Katja. Um, you could also go... Um, Kirsten buddy bag and have pockets with magnets in it and all of your uh, foil plates. And then you also have room in that for foil. If you have lots of foil, go with the Katja buddy bag. And then the 12 by 12, put your tools and supplies in the 12 by 12 storage and supply case. That, that would be a good way to, to take that around. The 12 by 12 storage and supply case, if you're using a lowest tote or Cindy tote, it does fit into the lowest tote or the Cindy tote as well. So that's a good way to go with that. All right, what's next, Suze? Okay. Now, how do we add our two team prize member to a Packers companion order? Um, you're gonna have to go through the prize member list. Probably, it's, I, don't, I don't know for, for a fact, I've never had to do that, but it's probably, you just probably just have a gift certificate, like enter your gift certificate. Um, number when you're buying something it probably just goes right in there uh i i would that's probably a better question for um customer service at crafters companion but i'm sure when you check out there's a box in one of the screens whether it's the first checkout screen or second that says do you have a gift certificate or coupon code or something like that and it probably just goes right in there my latest storage conundrum is how to store cross stitch fabric. The issue is they come folded in various configurations. I have older fabric which came folded in plastic baggies about four by six. Newer, often fat quarters. I want something where I can flip through them, i.e., not stack horizontally on top of one another. Any ideas? Um. Well, you, probably the best thing, which is going to be kind of a pain, I guess, would be to fold them all to the same size. And then, <laughs> uh, so then you could be consistent with that particular thing. I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't know that we make anything that's really a great fabric storage option for easy access. Um, you know, if you used something, if you folded them all, In, in a tall, skinny shape, right? Like, a, so this is maybe four inches, like four inches wide. And then you could line them up in something like like this. This is slides, the number six slide stash and store, right? You'd be able to flip through them. But it might be better to just, I, I mean, I think the key is going to be getting them to all the same shape, which could be kind of a pain. But I think in the long run, it would really serve you well to do it that way, whether you're rolling them or folding them. And then you could put them in almost anything. So depending on the space that you had to store them, like even a plastic tote, um, you know, first thing, my first thing to you would be choose your storage tool and then fold them all to fit in that storage tool. tool. But if you put them in a plastic bin, basically, especially with the lids, you can keep them protected and you folded them all the same size, it'd be easy to even insert dividers. So if you have cross stitch projects that are Easter or Christmas or birthday or just floral or whatever they are, you could easily stick a divider in between them also and be able to find them really easily. So I would choose a container and then go through the process of every time you buy them of um, just refolding it to be that exact shape. And the good, the a good idea if you're doing that is going to be to get a piece of hard chipboard and cut it to the shape that you want everything to fold and use that piece of hard chipboard as you're folding things. So you're folding things around it and rolling it up 
and then pulling it out so that every time it comes out exactly the same size. So that'll be helpful as well. Um, another person is suggesting would the cross stitch fabric work in the new fat quarter storage container? Yes, if you could get your hands on the new fat. <laughs> yes, it would work perfectly in there. That's kind of, you know, one of the things that it's designed for. Again, it does come with the folding, uh, the folding templates, a hard plastic template that you fold your fabric around. So it all comes out the same size. 100% you could do it in that. I don't know why those aren't on, aren't on the website or when or if they'll be on the website. Um, on the, it's going to be on the Crafters Companion website. Um, I'll email them and ask. So, and I don't know how big those projects are, right? I, I don't know how big a cross stitch project is, but if folding it to fat quarter size is a reasonable size for those, then that would be a perfect solution for that. It fits in your Ikea cubes. Um, it comes with the folding template. So uh, all those things would be great. I'll, I'll ask and see if I can figure out when they're going to be there, but that would be my thing. Find your storage okay. tool first and then and cool. some, um, Rhonda was suggesting you repeat the question because they can't oh, okay. from me. All right. Uh, saw the sale on Crafters Companion for the new toolboxes, but hate to order due to shipping. Are they available elsewhere? So she saw the sale on the new toolboxes on the Crafters Companion website. Um, doesn't want to pay the shipping. They are available for significantly less money. I don't know why. The Crafters Companion site has them priced at the price point they do. If you are in the U.S., you can buy them at scrapbook.com. I think it, on the U.K. Crafters Companion website, and they've got to ship them to you from there, so that's probably why they're more. But um, I think the one that's $21.99 is $13.99 at scrapbook.com. The $24.99 one is $14.99. The $25.91 is $16.99 on scrapbook.com. So they have them priced. I don't know who has the right or wrong price. I just uh, I just em emailed our, our sales director the other day and said, what's going on here with the, this pricing difference? But uh, the pricing on scrapbook.com for the toolboxes, and if you're unfamiliar with them, that are, that are th those are these guys right here, right? Um, so I would get them. And I think Stephanie has them. The Stamps of Life also has them. So... Yeah, so and this is the six by, I mean, this is the slimline one. Use it, your slimline dies, stamps, paper, envelopes, all that stuff. This is the, fits in the slimline. You've got a nine by six, you've got a, and a five by seven, and they all work with our pockets um, for those specific sizes. So I would look at stamps of life in the if you're buying in the u.s better price than if you're getting it on the crafters companion website and i know you get your platinum discount or whatever but even with the platinum discount they're less expensive on the stamps of life and at scrapbook.com okay look there first uh can you show us the six by six scrap master the six yeah i can i have one right here so the six by six scrap master is um, designed to work with all of our six by six products. If you are using the 12 by 12 scrap master, the idea behind the scrap master file folders is that you can put all the bits and pieces for a project or for a, or a, um, a specific paper collection in one place. So once you start cutting into your paper collection, um, then you have all the bits and pieces that you've cut, right? So you can see, I've got some Cut out here. I know this is with the stamps of life. You get some dies that cut out, um, or not all of them, but there are dies that cut out the shapes. So you could store the dies in there as well, right? So you've got some shapes in there. And then the embellishment. So what you've got with a six by six scrap master is a big interior gusseted pocket. You can see I've got a bunch of embellishments in there. You've got a slash pocket on this side. You've got a middle that's almost an inch wide so that all the other paper that you haven't cut into is going to fit in there and it all works. And then you've got a pocket on the outside, on the back and on the front. So you've got all that extra pocket space for those things. And then they come with three tabs and um, they fit in all of the six by six products that we make. So the Phalene, they fit in the six by six fab file. They fit in the six by six pop-up cube. So if you have the pop-up cube, I think this is also available on the stamps of life possibly at scrapbook.com. They also fit in here. So it's just a great way to sort, store, organize, label, 
collections, projects, anything along that in that six by six, um, you know, dimension, it's a great way to do that. And it does work with all of the six by six products that we make. So it's our latest and greatest just came out last month and it's at the stamp of life, um, dot com. If you search totally Tiffany or six by six scrap master, it'll pop up there for you. All right. What do we got? Suze? This is kind of on the same one. How can I share my six by six scrap master photos? Um, so if you have six by six scrap master photos and you're part of the get organized with totally Tiffany Facebook group, um, you can just, uh, upload them to the get organized with totally Tiffany. That would be awesome. People like to see how, how they're working and all that stuff. We don't. Yeah. And, and, um, uh, if you bought them from Stephanie, she may put them, you could send them to her. She may put them up on her product prod on her product listing uh, scrapbook.com will have them and they love to have customers share how they're using products and put them up with that. So any one of those options is a great option for, um, sharing your scrap master. And we really appreciate you doing that as well because people love to see how they're used. I've got a question. Is there a plan for an official get organized challenge in 2024? There is no plan for an official get organized challenge. Uh, Barb Carlson does a splendid job with the unofficial Get Organized Challenge. Without a website, we've got some issues to deal with there. So, oh, um, on the same thing, why did the Totally Tiffany website go away? Why did the Totally Tiffany website go away? I'm going to pause right there and remind you that in about three minutes, Susie's going to draw a winner. So, if you haven't had a chance to make a comment, ask a question, or tell us what your favorite TT product is, uh, now is the time to do it if you want to get into the drawing for the. Um, for the winner. Uh, why did the TT website go away? Um, <sighs> Crafters Companion just decided that it was rather than having two separate websites, it was better to put everything on one website. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's, <laughs> That's as much as I can say about that. I don't, yeah, it wasn't, it was definitely not my decision to do that. And I know that it has uh, presented some challenges for people looking for information and education and problem solving kinds of things. So um, yeah, I, I, I would definitely like go to the Toy Tiffany YouTube channel and, and search videos there. There's a lot of information there. If that's what you're looking for. What is the name of the bookshelf behind you? What is the name of the bookshelf behind me? It's Fajelkinj, which is not how you say it at all, but that's how you spell it. It's F-J-A-L-K-I-N-G-E. It is from Ikea. I love them. Um, they, uh, I had my husband drill some extra holes in them so that I could adjust shelves a little bit more specifically to where I wanted them but they are lightweight. They're easy to move around. They're easy to put up. Um, I've had these, these again have been with me for years. Uh, we, we had them in the Tacoma warehouse. We have a bunch of them in the garage. Um, they're a great, they're metal, right? The shelves are metal. The, the brackets are metal. So the quality, I mean, the quality is great. And like I said, they have lasted for years and I, I love the fact that you can adjust the shelving. And I would really recommend to anybody who is thinking about building or remodeling a craft room. I know there's this big, um, like the beauty of a craft room and having beautiful cabinets and countertops and that kind of stuff in your craft room um, is makes it look beautiful. I'm not saying you, sh you shouldn't do any of that. But if you're like me and my goal is um, accessibility, I, I don't have any. There isn't one cupboard in this room is 36 feet long and 12 feet wide. And there is not one cupboard in here. And there is not one table in here that isn't on wheels. So everything that moves around in this space, depending on what I'm doing and who I'm doing it with, what kind of crafting I'm doing, how much mess is it making, right? So everything can be moved one way or the other. Um, and having open shelving makes all that easy. Now, I have huge open shelving over here. I mean, I have 
and then my open shelving is tall enough so my paper carts roll under it, right? So that there's from the certain height down to the floor, I can roll anything under there. Even the totes that I use for products and process design totes where I have all the bits and pieces, they're all on wheels as well. That is a key for me. All the carts that I have with all the supplies on them, I can roll them anywhere and get them out of the way, open up space or condense things down. So if you're building a room, wheels are key and open shelving, I would recommend all day, every day. It is not nearly as pretty as cabinets, but what happens when you have cabinets is, first of all, you lose a whole bunch of space because your cabinets actually take up space. Um, but you tend, not, not you, the universal you, there's a tendency to just shove things in and close the door. And <laughs> Susie's laughing and nodding. Um, and then you forget what's even in there. And when you open the door, you're like, I don't want to sort through all that stuff. I'm going to go do this or that. Um, so when it's all out and, and apparent, it's easy to put things back when you're done with them because you're not fighting with doors or whatever. So I love open shelving. Um, it isn't pretty, but if you're looking for a space that's functional, there's no better solution than open shelving. And these are very inexpensive, which is also nice because you're not married to them, which I guess is going back to my original point. If you are just starting out with the craft room, I would buy something inexpensive like these, uh, put them up in your craft room, see how, how you use it. Because I believe that most of us start with an idea of what we're going to do. And then when the actual thing happens, it doesn't work out the way that we thought. And we wish we had put the shelves on that wall or put the cabinets on that wall instead of on this wall or had things back there. And this allows you to kind of test out what's going to work well in my space. These also worked at one point as a room divider so that they came out from the middle of the room and both sides of the room, I had access often on the shelf. So this was office side and this was craft side, but I could get to things from either side. So there's all kinds of things like that, that you can do. And then if you decide, okay, I love the way this laid out, but I really want cabinets, then it's very easy to sell shelving, right? So you use them for however long and then say, okay, I don't want to be, I'm going to sell those. Now I'm going to buy cabinets, but you've had a good sense of how am I working? And the same thing with the Ikea tables that you put on wheels, right? You can move them any direction, put them under the window, move them away from the window. Whatever. Okay. There's my rant. Well, I haven't ranted about that in a long time. All right. Do you have any more questions, Susie? Cause I'm sure we're at yes. the end of the, okay. What do you got? Do. Hang on just a second. Uh, are you streaming earlier than usual? It's usually 5 p.m. in the UK time. A very confused UK fan. I think the UK hasn't had their time change yet, maybe. So yes, we don't change we don't change time in Arizona. Um, but we're always on at nine o'clock Pacific. So when when Pacific time changes, and I think the UK changes. I don't know, next week or something. They're always a week. They're always like two weeks different than us. And so there's this weird time. And then once you guys change spring ahead or fall back or something, it probably works out, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. For half the year, we start at nine o'clock our time, which is the same as nine o'clock Pacific time. And half the year, we start at 10 o'clock our time, which is nine o'clock Pacific. So we will operate on nine o'clock Pacific, whatever's happening there. Just one more. Um Julie says, I'm having an issue with the 12 by 12 scrap master seams coming apart. Any suggestions? Um, she's having an issue. Julie's having an issue with her scrap masters. I, I don't, that would probably be a customer service. Like and there may be a bad batch or something was manufactured incorrectly or something like that. I've never come up against that before where there's problems with the seams on the scrap master. So um, I would definitely just reach out to customer service and ask them to replace them. Anything else? Are we ready for the winner? Should we have a drum roll? Should we put Petey up to announce the winner? Come here, Petey. You want to get up and say hi? Come on. Come on. Let's say hi to everybody. Oh, Petey, you, you super chunk. Here's Petey. Petey doesn't like being in here with us. He wants, dad. He wants his dad. That's it. He wants to be with Park, who went to play golf. So uh, who's our winner today? Uh, the winner is Wendy Lakin Hefner. Wendy Lakin Hefner, you are this week's winner. Look, that makes Petey wag his tail. Uh, you are this week's winner of the $25 Totally Tiffany shopping spree. 
So in order to collect your shopping spree, you just need to send an e Well, first of all, if you are not a member of Club Inspire, join Club Inspire and then send an email to prizes, prizes with an S at crafterscompanion.com and let them know that you are this week's winner of the totally Tiffany $25 shopping spree. And they will put that into your Club Inspire account or give you a certificate in your Club Inspire account. And then you can spend that um, the next time you shop on the Crafters Companion website. All right, my friends, thanks for joining us today. I will see all of you next Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, Tuesday Tribe, Tuesday Live. Thanks.